right now. Hello, yeah. all, and welcome to another episode of Sound Booth Theater Live. My she name is Justin yeah. Thomas James. Wait, what? Are you interrupting me, Jeff? I, I am. Your mic is so hot right now. Oh, you like it? You like it hot like that? No, too hot. No, too Fine. hot. All right. Well, uh, take over then, Jeff. Okay. Uh, this is Sound Booth Theater Live. He wasn't lying to you just because his mic was hot. Um, and we have a guest today besides me. I'm a guest. It's pretty cool to be a guest on my own show. But um, we have Elias Hooper here. Uh, Hello. And he wrote a book called World Tree Online, which we picked up late last year. And it's going to be out like any minute now. I think we submitted it. could it even be right week. now. It could even be. The gremlins have it. Because we don't actually. Uh, they're gnomes, sir. Excuse ah. me. Um, <laughs> I call and, them gremlins. Oh, man. You are so racist. Okay. But <laughs> seriously, I mean, like maybe maybe we could search Audible right now and it might even. Oh, maybe... let's do a search. Let's do an Audible search. Hey, because... am I still uh, am I still super hot? No, no, no you're good. You're good. You're All right. Good. What if I yell like this? Because yeah, it might happen. A, a little, a little bit <laughs> hot there, but it's not. It's barely not. hear you. So no, it barely. is not out yet. <laughs> it is not out yet. But um. Okay. It will be like any minute, any minute now, because uh, a thousand drunken monkeys just came out today. Oh, yeah. and I think we Fair uploaded island? around the same time. Um. Yeah, I thought I submitted thousand drunken monkeys after World Tree. Hmm. I don't I don't remember no. But, but we are doing world through world tree it. world trees through uh, spoken realms. Yes, that's, that's so true. they take a couple days to well get it I don't know. Usually they're faster. Usually they're faster. Oh really? So I think today's just opposite day. Hmm. Weird, yeah. By oh, the way, Justin day. Thomas James is hosting. Yeah, in case you couldn't hear my my name before. That's what I sounded like. <laughs> okay, so that was kind of robotic. I don't from from my end at least, um, but I hope you guys understood what he just said. And he narrated this book, so Justin, take back over. Yeah, I narrated World Tree Online. It's uh, all but available for you guys, and uh, I had a blast narrating it. Um, it is a oh, how would I describe it? I I felt like it was very dramatic. There was a lot of drama and tension between the characters and like high stakes, like huge, epic, you know, proportions. And um, that just, I, I, I just had a blast. We're going to be reading uh, three different scenes for you today. And um, before we get to them, um, Elias, EA, why don't you go ahead and just explain a little bit about the plot of the book? What's it all about? Uh, see, old guy, you know, the uh, kind of a bit the common VR MMO situation where somebody comes into this game, the several world, except the, in this case, the main character is this old guy. His wife passed away a couple years ago. He's kind of distracting himself with video games a bit. And he, he, you know, gets trapped in the game as happens in these kind of stories. And it begins this sort of long adventure on the, uh, the, I wish we had a picture of the cover up, the, the world tree, which is like a little different from the world tree in most mythology kind of stuff. Cause it's like a, literally a massive tree with worlds, th thousands of worlds hanging off the end. Mm, mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, a moderator that becomes kind of unhinged and tries to take control of the tree. And the old guy kind of fights back against that. And that's, um, that's probably a pretty good synopsis of the, um, of getting into it. Um, I'm just looking at the chat and I see there is nobody chatting. Um, so let's do a bit of a roll call. Who's there? Who's listening? Who's watching? Say hello. Please. We're here for you. Oh, and I, I love this cover. Like the uh, Jeff, I remember you introduced me to uh, Richard Sashagane, who did the cover. Uh, Sashagane. Oh, Sashagane, yeah. yeah. And it's 
I love that cover. He he's so talented. And he? he did mm. a, such a good job on that one and the second one. Yeah, feast your eyes. Beautiful. Everyone, yeah. this is uh, I'm screen sharing it right now for you guys. It's a little bit low res on the oh, chat, page, but uh, yeah, yeah, he you guys that, the link to the book is oh wait the link to the to book two is in the description, but you can find book one through that as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did such a good job of taking like the ideas that I had and and actually showing it as a like a picture. It's a really majestic, exciting, adventurous cover. Yeah. Really pulls yeah. you in. Uh, we got a few people uh, saying hello. We got Kyle Tapainer. Welcome, Kyle. Uh, we've got Stridos. Stridos the mute says no, never, never <laughs> will Stridos say hello. The irony. <laughs> um, uh, Tucker stuff. Hello, Tucker. Frederick Tromsdal. Tromsdal. That sounds like a Skyrim name. Yeah, it does. Patrick Tromsdall. 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 Yeah. Um, like a dragon shout. <laughs> Frederick Tromsdall. Tromsdall. You know. Um. Oh, hello. Uh, we've got Jeff Thomas. Another I Jeff. I don't know who that is. You don't know who that is. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just... Wait, is that you? Just trying, add, just, trying add, just trying to add some flavor to this uh, to this introduction of people that are listening to us. Yeah, yeah, we got some peeps. So, uh, oh, we got Michael White. Michael White says, "Yo, yo, must be black." Reminds me. <laughs> reminds me of Ghostbusters. That's how we speak. Me, you remember yeah. Ghostbusters when um, they're like pretending to be street crew workers, and the cops come over, and uh, <laughs> okay. And, Egon is the least, you know, he's just not a good actor at all. He's just like the deadpan scientist. Yeah. Always intense. And so, you know, all the all of the other three are like doing a really good impression of like some Brooklyn, you know, worker from the street getting frustrated that someone's questioning them. And then they ask, <laughs> they ask Egon something and he just goes, yo, yo. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Oh man, I have to see that again. I don't. I totally forgot about that scene. Oh man, it, the entire movie is good from beginning to end. No, it is a classic. Nothing bad about that movie whatsoever. I've been. How I guess that my rewatch Boy? those mm. many rewatches. Yeah, who's the best? Who's the best Ghostbuster? At Bill Murray. I mean, yeah, I I would tend to agree. Yeah. There's no Though I am out. a fan of they're all, they're all great. They're all great, but Bill Murray, come on. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis <laughs> is the best one. <laughs> Epic <laughs> Relics. We <laughs> love your work. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's get back to Oh yeah, yeah. The task oh, at hand. Right. At hand. Right. Wait. Is this not the uh the, the Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters fan novel? Club stream? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Oh, fuck. Do, do y'all remember right. the old cartoon Ghostbusters? Yes. I dug that too. He, yeah. Yes, very vaguely. Yeah. I don't know why they just randomly popped in my head. Not random. Yeah. Around the top of <laughs> I think I think oh, it might yeah. have had something to do with. Oh us. yeah. <laughs> well, I was trying to I was trying to remember the movies because it's been so long since I watched them. But for some reason, I was thinking of that instead. So I, I have this I have this wild idea that uh, I'm going to break this episode into planned segments. Okay. Okay. So uh, just a little rundown of what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be talking about. First things first, we're going to narrate scenes from the book. We got three scenes prepped for you that are going to give you an idea of what the whole World Tree Online experience, audio experience even, is going to be like for you when it releases any time this week. Um, second, we're going to, uh, do a dedicated question and answer period. Um, I did not tell EA about this. Oh, wow. So, um, he did not plan any of his answers. Brilliant. So, um, uh, once we hit that segment, you guys can ask him any questions, Mr. Jeff Hayes, myself, um, we're here for you. And then lastly, we're going to end on some plugs. We got some cool stuff happening at Sound Booth Theater. EA's got some cool stuff in the works. And um, we're going to end on that note. So um, 
welcome. And wh why don't we uh, get to some narrating? What do you say? Yes. Yes. Jump into it. Yes. So um, we don't want to give you guys any spoilers tonight. No spoilers. So a lot of these scenes are going to come from the beginning of the book. Uh, and our first scene is going to be the very, very, very beginning of the book. Oh. And it oh. is the copyright. We're going to narrate the copyright um, manifesto. Um, oh, where's that? World Tree Online by E.A. Hooper. Oh. Copyright 2018. All right. I veto reserved. this part. You veto it? Yeah, oh, it's my favorite part of the book. No. No. Not on, the best writing. All right, right. Yes, we said no spoilers. So, no, um, right. <laughs> well, we'll jump ahead. We'll skip past that. Uh, yeah, we're going to start at the very, very beginning, the prologue. We're going to read the whole prologue. All right. So, you get to be old yeah. Jim again. You get yep. to be old Jim. <laughs> I get to be old Vincent. And, uh, yeah, why don't we do this? Let's do it. Um, See because it's the prologue, phone. normally I would ask uh, EA to, um, I guess, set up the scene for us and give us some context. But because it's the prologue, he already did that when he wrote this book. So <laughs> I think we're just going to go for it. Just wing it. Good call. Let's do it. And actually, this is going to be very close to the actual audiobook <laughs> experience. Uh, you're missing some sound effects, uh, but you got me, you got Jeff playing Jim, and um, the whole cast is here, baby. So let's do it. Prologue. The old man fingers raced across his controller as he struggled to defeat the final boss of a game he hadn't played in 20 years. His face tensed as he tried to remember the enemy's every move. He'd already died five times to the giant sword-wielding foe, but on the sixth run, his old muscle memory kicked in, and Vincent found himself dodging every attack and timing his own counter moves with perfect precision. When the enemy's health hit zero, he jumped to his feet and cheered. That's right! Vincent yelled at the screen. I've still got it! He ignored the endgame cutscene and backed into his virtual console navigator. His eyes scanned the list of recently completed games. <sighs> Is that it? That's the last game I had on my list to replay. That list was supposed to distract me until after the anniversary of Monica's passing. The old man sank back into his gaming chair. The nanomachines and the material compressed, shaping the seat to give him maximum comfort, and the heads-up display in his contacts showed a screen that asked if he wanted to order antidepressants. No, he said, waving, the, waving away the ad. I don't need any drugs. I mean, other than the ones that keep me healthy. Dang technology. Can't a man deal with his problems the old-fashioned way and ignore them with video games and alcohol? <laughs> he reached for his drink and found it empty. <sighs> Refill, he called. A drone flew from his fridge in the kitchen and sprayed a foam into his cup. The foam settled into his favorite root beer-flavored alcoholic beverage. An augmented reality screen appeared, asking if he wanted to order more of the beverage before his supply ran out. Vincent sighed. <sighs> yeah, sure. The screen inquired if he needed anything else with his delivery, and Vincent had to stop to think. Maybe I should give in and buy that blasted game everyone's obsessed over. He flipped through his HUD to one of the hundred game invitations his friend Jim had spammed him with over the last three weeks. He read over the tagline and the basic information. World Tree Online. Take a vacation to worlds like you've never imagined. Designed by Arcus, the world's most powerful AI system, 
which was created to discover ways of expanding human lifespans. Arcus's neural modifiers and advanced headset allow you to live an entire month inside the game in an hour of real-world time. I don't really care about extending my lifespan with Monica gone, but it might be a good distraction for the next week. At the very least, Jim will finally stop bugging me about it. It can't be that good game, can it? Just another VR MMORPG. Only time moves faster when you're wearing Arcus's headset. I would have loved something like that in my youth. I could have taken a break from writing essays in college and gone on a VR vacation. Work would never have seemed so bad knowing I could spend a month or two in the game once I got home. I would have had more time with Monica. Vincent stared at the screen for several more seconds, struggling to decide. What was it that Monica used to say when I couldn't make decisions? <laughs> Always pick the choice that will add more excitement to your life. <laughs> He could practically hear his wife's happy voice repeating her mantra. He pressed buy and accepted the order. After a few minutes, the delivery drone arrived. On his augmented reality screen, he watched it drop a small container on his doorsteps. One of his house, flo One of his house drones flew down, grabbed the container, and brought it inside through a moving panel. The drone flew the container to his gaming chair and dropped it in his hands. When Vincent looked at the bottle, an augmented reality screen appeared, providing information. He skimmed over the details and agreed to the terms of use. So, I need to drink this liquid, which contains nanomachines developed by Arcus, at least ten minutes before I play the game. He unscrewed the container, downed the liquid, and then handed the empty bottle to a drone to dispose. As he waited for the package with the headset, he sent a voice chat request to his lifelong friend, Jim. Hey, Vince. Jim's voice replied. What are you up to? Well, I finally broke down and got that game, Vincent replied. Uh, World Tree Online? Yeah, that one. Really? I didn't think you'd actually give in. Uh, then why'd you keep spamming me with invites? Because I really wanted you to play it, man. That game is amazing. It's like I'm reliving my 20s, but better. I'm meeting women, binge drinking, and partying. Vincent shook his head in disappointment. We're 70, Jim. What woman would want to drink and party with you? Everyone's young again in World Tree Online. It's like living a new life. The game feels so real, Vince. You won't believe it until you experience it yourself. I've heard that before. You know how many games have claimed to be lifelike in our time. But this one really is. That Arcus, its technology is like nothing out there. Even the sex feels real. Oh, the game's only been out for a few weeks, but I have 150 hours put into it. You actually caught me just as I was about to jump in again. A hundred fifty? If an hour of real time is one month in the game, you've already lived there for more than a decade. Jesus Christ, Jim. Doesn't that mess with your perception of reality? You sound like those old people that used to cry that video games uh, were destroying the fabric of society. To be fair, no game ever let you take a vacation during your lunch break. That has to screw with your head. No, it compresses your memories as you log out. You know how you can clearly remember some things from years ago, but then you might forget what you ate for breakfast? It's like that. Or maybe it'd make more sense to compare it to a, a long dream, only it feels real while you're in there. I remember the conversation we had last week better than I remember my marriage a few days ago. You got married again? Twice since I've been playing. Uh, 
The first one ended on mutual terms, but this last one was a nasty divorce. She took my house and half my items. I'm never getting married again, I promise you that. You said that after Veronica. <laughs> Veronica. <laughs> That's how you wanted it pronounced, right? <laughs> I, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I don't think, I don't know if that name ever That's right. Oh, yeah. That, that that Veronica. Very, Veronica. <laughs> very I was young lady she was. All right. In my defense, I was channeling a little bit of Harmon Cooper there for uh, Cherry Blossom Girls. <laughs> Veronica. Yeah. You said that after Veronica <laughs> and Pauline. Well, I'm serious this time. I'm single, young again, and ready to mingle. The world tree is my oyster, Vince. Yours, too, once you log in. So hurry up and let's get this party started. I don't plan on doing much partying, Jim. I just want a challenging game to distract me for the next week. You know... The second anniversary of Monica's passing is coming up. You mean Monica? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, right. I, I could never get it, her name right. I know, I know. That's why I sent you so many invites. Get in the game, bro. Bro? I haven't heard that one in a long time. I keep telling you, I feel young again. Better than young. Better than I've ever felt. At my level, I'm as fast and strong as, as an Olympic athlete. Uh, but the game's still challenging, right? You know, I always like a good challenge. I've barely left the noob worlds, Vince. I've heard the playtesters from before the game's release have reached a point where they have superhuman abilities. And no one's beaten the game yet. Arcus made it almost impossible to reach the top of the world tree. Well, Arcus hasn't met a player like me yet. I don't know, Vince. There are over 500 million players online right now. Wow, that many. Unbelievable. If it goes any higher, it'll hit its biggest concurrent population since release. Everyone wants to live longer. Even people I know that never cared for gaming have been hitting me up for parties on the world tree. Some of them say they've barely paid attention to the real world since the game came out. And you're sure it won't destroy the fabric of human civilization? No more than social media and government spying ever did. People will adapt. It's what we humans do best. An augmented reality screen appeared and showed Vincent that two more items had arrived. His house drones retrieved the package is. One went to the fridge to restock. Re <laughs> Pardon me. One went to the fridge to restock his beer, and the other brought him a sleek box. My headset is here, Vincent told his friend. Nice, Jim replied. I'm jumping back in. See you there, buddy. See you, Vincent replied, just before the voice chat ended. Vincent opened the box and took out the black headset. It had a simple, sleek design and felt light in his hands. At first glance, it would have looked like the dozen other headsets sitting around his house. However, on closer inspection, closer inspection, uh, the design had an almost alien feel to it. I'm holding the most advanced piece of technology on this planet he realized. I'm like a monkey staring at one of those old touchscreen phones. This is something that humans couldn't have designed. Even the articles online say Arcus's developers barely understand this technology. It's why they were so nervous about releasing it to the public. Why the government demanded Arcus allow a certain number of human moderators in the game. Why many countries outright banned it. Why some religious and political groups protested the game's release. Vincent remembered his wife's words and smiled. <sighs> I won't be one of those old guys that's too afraid to try something new, he told himself. Let's see what kind of challenges this game has waiting for me. Bring it on, Arcus. He slid the headset over his forehead 
and it seemed to adjust to his head's shape. The moment it settled, he heard a humming noise, like a soft melody, and then his living room disappeared. Scene. Nice. All right. So <clears throat> that was us being old folks. That was fun. You know, yeah, great. being <laughs> old. I love being old, playing an old person. It's just like, though it's funny because like, like, 70 like my dad's over 70 like huh? like yeah he does not sound like that like we were like doing them like they're like 95 years old like oh, 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 you know well, like maybe, maybe so they much... were uh they might have been smokers yeah. <laughs> they, they were smokers yeah. oh boy oh, differently. <laughs> yeah that's right and plus i mean the we're the air quality in the future is just oh, horrid yeah. right it's bad yeah terrible yeah. So yeah, we 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 took all of that into consideration when we took on these characters. We we had a big um, powwow and talked about character backgrounds and the environmental conditions that they lived in. Um, all right. Well, what's next? Uh, beautiful. Yeah. Um, uh, what is next? We're going to be jumping over to chapter three, the end of chapter three, and uh, I'm just going to pop over to the chat. See what's what's see what's bumping. Um, oh, we got Barry Compton. Yes. Okay. So uh, Barry Compton has brought up a uh, very, very tragic news. The Notre Dame Cathedral caught fire. Um, apparently. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was saying I saw that. It looked like the, um, I think one of those spires collapsed in it. But last I saw on Reddit, it looked like they said they had like saved it from complete destruction though. Right. Oh. Yeah. They, it, most of the wood burnt, but the stone structure and a lot of the art, I guess, oh. was preserved. Have you guys no. been to Notre no. Dame? No, but no, that, I've never been. That cathedral looks dope as hell, or at least it did. Yeah, it used to. It. Yeah. 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 Apparently, the stuff that it did destroy it had been like, was like work that had been done in the 19th century. So, I mean, it sucks like obviously like like you don't want even a big repairs, landmark like that to burn down but think about that even the repairs are historical yeah yeah <laughs> right like that's how fucking old that building is it's, kind of it's fucking beautiful though yeah um let's see uh jeff thomas just bought the books oh thank you very much jeff thomas red book one already this is great excellent Sold ASAP. Yeah, it's a really great concept, isn't it? Like, like you don't read about old people too often, and having them in a game and where they're young again, like it's a really fun concept. Um, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Um, it was a bit of a challenge too to like be a young person who's actually an old person. Yeah, something yeah. I had to think about. Um, how does someone get SBT to voice for a book? Acquisitions at soundbooththeater.com. Send us an email with whatever your whatever your info is. Um, yeah, Bon's got us. And Hello, Bon. Bon is such a such a trooper for us. She's a treat. She's so cool. She's Bon Bon. Um, great. <laughs> well, yeah. End of chapter three. Uh, anything else that you guys wanted to say before uh, we move on? Uh yes, what exact where exactly is Jeff? Like you're just going to have to find out, Jeff. You're just going to have to figure Jeff, that shit out. Jeff Thomas says I'm going to be that old dude someday. Yeah. I hope to be that old dude someday too. Well, actually. I can just have <laughs> drones bringing me beer and just playing video games. That's that's the dream. One hundred percent. I probably want to be yeah, just playing video games when I'm old too. That's what my dad does. That's all my dad does. That's awesome. <laughs> so this is going to be um, the line that we're going to be starting with is both combatants charged mana. Hence, yeah, right after Mega Ether, drink to recover a moderate amount of mana. And um, Vincent is in the game. Uh, he's, it's his first day in the game. He's still figuring things out and, um, he is, um, headed over to the arena where people, you know, 
fight like gladiators basically but because it's a game like you know it's just like a pvp zone right and so he's watching this match and um a couple things happen first off he notices <clears throat> something in the magic uh when he uh, is observing the fighting that is interesting and uh, the second thing is pretty much shit hits the fan yeah um do you want to uh say anything else to set up the scene there EA? uh no nah, i think that that pretty much does it he's pretty new to the game he's just wandering around aimlessly wanting to check out some fights and jumps in right here beautiful right, watches it okay so who am i pl i'm playing woman two yes you are woman two and uh and why don't you take the um the computer as well the ai okay what about john who's john uh john oh you uh... Take him. oh god it hurts so much yeah yeah uh, yeah 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 <laughs> he's one of the fighters okay so he's, so he's fighting fighter. what's up so he's just uh he's just uh he's a red shirt basically yeah okay. pretty much exactly gotcha I think he gets mentioned like twice ever. Gotcha. All right. All right. Let's make this happen. All right. Second scene. End of chapter three. World Tree Online. Both combatants charged mana into their offhand. The glowing balls of energy pulsated and expanded, filling the area and strand and stands with a red glow. The crowd screamed with enthusiasm, and many people stood to their feet. Both mages have red mana, while mine is green, Vincent noted. Mana color must be determined by your starting class. He stood and leaned forward to scan their spells, but before he could, the two mages released their ultimate attacks at one another. The two balls of mana hit one another in midair and exploded, shaking the entire Colosseum. The red light of the explosion blinded Vincent for a moment, but his scan caught a strange black distortion at the epicenter of the blast. Negative energy. Unknown. What was that? Vincent asked the woman beside him as the light of the explosion dimmed, leaving only May on her feet. John lay on the ground, alive, but with his right arm and leg vaporized by the blast. That was awesome, is what it was, the woman replied, grinning. No, I uh, scanned something at the center of the blast, called negative energy. Oh, that's a technical anomaly. Since the physics and magic of the game are interconnected, sometimes when powerful attacks collide, they create a distortion to the gravity. Arcus couldn't remove it without screwing with the gravity of the world tree, so the AI named it negative energy and left it in. I know players can develop their own spells in this game, including spells that affect the physics of the world. I wonder if there's a way to use negative energy. It must be tied to the way the game reads mass and power, like when a star collapses on itself and creates a black hole. Maybe if I compressed a bunch of mana. He sat back in his seat while everyone else eyed the combatants. Vincent held his hands out and tried to draw out his mana. Green energy leaked from his palms, flowing out in globules like floating liquid. He almost spilled the blobs onto the ground and had to move his hand around to pack it all into a tidy sphere. I can barely control this stuff, but leveling up a bunch should make it easier. I think Jim said perception is tied to developing spells. Maybe if I really focus my willpower, I can compact it. He squeezed his hands and concentrated all his attention on the glowing ball of energy. The ball shrank and pulsated, spraying globules of mana out the sides. He caught the mana and willed it back into the ball. Almost as soon as he pressed down on it again, another stream of mana fired from the other side, and he stopped it before it hit the chair in front of him. Phew, close one. Spirit level up. One greater than two. Or one to two. One to two. Yeah, the way I did that in the audiobook was spirit has increased to level two. Gotcha. But spirit has increased from one to, I forget what you said. Increased to so level in two. Increased to level two. <laughs> Vincent shoved hard, harder, 
trying to will the mana ball to become smaller and denser. He shrank it to about a tenth its original size before his mana felt too depleted, making the ball spark and evaporate in his hands. Spell creation, zero percent. He sank back in his chair, feeling tired. <sighs> Perception might help you shape mana, but I still need spirit and resolve to make anything impressive. That's assuming what I was trying to make is even possible. I didn't even get it to one percent. Just as Vincent got ready to message Jim and ask him questions about spell creation, an update appeared on his HUD. New update. Time remaining. 30 days? Is that right? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Real world time. In the arena, John released a horrific scream. He rolled across the ground, gripping the remains of his missing arm. <laughs> oh, God! It hurts so much! I can't take this! He roared with pain and then finally put a finger into his own mouth and shot a mana gun through his own skull. Vincent had jumped to his feet in time to see John kill himself, and the surrounding crowd erupted with nervous chatter. Holy crap, the woman beside him said. What? Vincent asked, glaring at, glancing at her. The woman stared off at nothing, and Vincent assumed she'd been looking at something on her HUD. The update, she said, her eyes wide. It completely disabled pain reduction. Not only that... It increased the time dilation by a lot. Vincent opened the update log, and his jaw dropped. During the update, time dilation has been changed from one month for every hour to one year for every five seconds. Because of the time dilation change, respawning will now take approximately two weeks of in-game time. One year? Vincent said. Every five seconds in the real world is now a year in this game? How is that even possible? Not even Arcus should be capable of that. It's beyond human technology. Arcus isn't human, the woman said. It's an AI system more powerful than anything in the world. I don't know how comfortable I feel playing this game with it messing with the time dilation that much. Who knows what that's doing to our brains? I'm logging off. The woman flickered in and out where she stood, almost as if caught in a glitch. She fell into her seat and gasped for air. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. What happened? Vincent asked. I, I couldn't breathe for a few seconds, and the game wouldn't let me log off. Vincent peered around the arena stands, watching hundreds of other players glitching as they tried and failed to log out of the game. He glanced again at the update log and skimmed over it for useful information. Players may be unable to log out of World Tree Online for the duration of the update due to an incompatible neural connection to their bodies. I apologize for any inconvenience. Vincent fell backward into his seat, but his eyes stayed fixated on those two sentences. In inconvenience? You call this an inconvenience? That's 360 years. We can't really be trapped here for that long, can we? Across the stands, the crowd began to panic as more people discovered they couldn't log out. Some of them discussed options for escaping the game. Some sent messages to Arcus's developers, knowing from interviews that they spent a lot of time in the game. A few people simply broke down and cried in their seats. Even May trembled in fear as she stared at the dust remains of the man she'd horrifically injured. This can't be happening, the woman beside Vincent said, rocking in her seat. We can't really be stuck here. I have family I'm supposed to visit this weekend. I can't wait for more than 300 years to see them again. She paused a moment. My baby sister. I won't get to see my baby sister for centuries. She buried her face in her hands and cried. Three hundred and sixty years. All I wanted was to distract myself for the next week, and now I'm stuck here for more than three centuries. No. No, I won't let myself get trapped here. 
There needs to be a way out. Maybe Jim will know something. And then, uh, yeah, we uh, actually said the uh, the character names. Oh, yeah. For Vincent. Yeah. You've seen the update, right? We can't really be up stuck here for that long, can we? Not even Arcus should be capable of that. Jim. Yeah. I'm talking with some friends about the update right now. We have a plan to deal with the situation. Don't worry, Vince. Get over to the Blue Phoenix District right now, then find Varia's Club on 19th Street. We'll talk in person when you get here when you get here. Crowfoot Jim has ended. Crowfoot Jim has ended your private chant. Scene. Scene. Agreed. <laughs> Fuck yeah. It yeah. is a great Shit scene. Shit hits the fan. Shit hits that fan. Um, and also, I'm curious. So, this girl who discovers the um, uh, the update, what the update has done. I'm kind of curious, like how she's doing. You know, <laughs> you know, no, no spoilers aside, but all spoilers aside. But like, I wonder, like, what's she doing? Like, you know, it's been a certain amount of time by the end of the book. Like, uh. Curious. I don't think I ever gave her name. Yeah. There's she's woman two. Yeah, woman I, two. I, I should reintroduce the her. Role of the lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> reintroduce her in book two or book three. Now that book two's already out, you should reintroduce her in book three as woman two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, are you woman two? <laughs> it's woman two. It's been forever. I don't know if I'd have a good spot to do that, but I, I think we should have. <laughs> I think you could assume she's either just hanging around a long time or got bored and eventually tried to migrate up the world tree like a lot of people do. Right. I'm yeah. bored of panicking and rocking back and forth. <laughs> yeah. First 200 years, rocking back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> last, last 100 years, well, fuck it. Might as well see how far I can go. Yeah, you can only like panic for so long. And you can't like, you know, end your life or anything like that. You just respawn. So yeah. Let's see. Let's see the chat. What are people saying? Uh Jay Seymour is here. Hello, Jay. Welcome to the party, pal. Um, is this Gabe? 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 Is this Gabe? This is Gabe? Gabe. Who's Gabe? Who's Gabe? <laughs> it's Gabe. Gabe. Uh, yeah. Well, Gabe, Gabe's here, probably. If Gabe, if you're here, say hello. People, people are excited for Gabe, so he's somebody. <laughs> Bond says, "When Jeff sounds more feminine than me." <laughs> hmm. Oh man, it's my job. It's, my it's job. your job. Yeah. Lim Thao, uh, 360 years when you update on dial-up. <laughs> it's a sinful wound. Uh, that sounds very, very accurate. Yep. I kind of miss dial up because then, you know, like we would have excuses to not get things done. <laughs> totally. Oh, yeah. Oh, the dial up crapped out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my roommate was using the phone. I yeah. couldn't, you know, upload. It deleted I don't want to go back to those days. Just upload. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, David Crudup is also here. Um, David Crudup says, hi, Gabe. <laughs> Everybody say hi to Gabe. Hello, Gabe. <laughs> Always great to have you. Gabe is our ghost watcher. <laughs> <laughs> ghost watcher. I, I love what Sinful Wound says. I already said the other day, 10 out of 10 convincing trap. Going to be a lot of confused boys in the future. Dude. I mean, I feel like oh. this is going to have to be a thing that we do. Like, like I need to stream myself playing a video game now <laughs> and totally, have you ever totally just, trap some dudes. Have you ever just done, like, a oh, whole harem book yeah. just by yourself? Um, yes. I feel like you could. <laughs> yes. I mean, Other Life Dreams, right? The Other Life series. Uh, That's basically a harem series. I mean, it's all FTB, but... I, Shit, I did all. I did the entire cast of ladies. Man, I'm I'm rolling the idea through my VR head chat. about you playing. Oh like, yes, VR chat. VR chat, oh, World of Warcraft. 
Like, like, yeah, I guess VR chat it would have to be, right? That's that that's that game where like everybody has like a different avatar from like different yeah, you, know. you just take on all kinds of crazy avatars. Yeah, I'm gonna right. find the the Fox sluttiest, series. the sluttiest avatar I could possibly Hi. find. <laughs> <laughs> and just dude, <laughs> that you need to that should go viral, yeah. man. You gotta oh, do yeah. that. <laughs> that video. That you gotta be, do that. Just get him. Just get him to get a fap on my stream. Oh, and then, uh, <laughs> and then be like, "All right, princess, my turn." <laughs> oh man! <laughs> what? What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> oh god! It would backfire though. It'd be like, yeah. "Oh, I knew the whole time." <laughs> Bring it. Yeah, um, kind of backfire. Scott, that's Scott that's totally perfect. VR chat. Yeah, gotta do that. <laughs> that, like, oh, dude, we we do actually, dude. Once my once my den is all set up to do, uh, like I'll have my VR set up again, and I think we should do it. All right, all right, we'll make so it happen. Did they get a HTC Vive? <laughs> Simple wound says, "Yeah, people on VR chat love traps." <laughs> Really? Yeah, I can. Or or are all the are are they all gonna be like on their on uh you know are they all gonna be suspicious? Are they gonna be on the lookout for traps though? Like is it gonna be harder to trap people on VR chat because of this? Mm, because only if they see this video. Okay. They'll, so, they'll be too welcoming of it and then it won't be funny. <laughs> yeah. You'll just fit in with the crowd. <laughs> Like, yeah, oh, I imagine I you. They're like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> <laughs> well, that's hopeful. So <laughs> um. Oh, I could play the lusty or I could play the lusty Argonian maid. Oh, 100 percent. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Welcome, traveler. Let me see that tail, young man. Ooh. Mm. Not that tail. So scaly. <laughs> oh, I, got I, love, shingles. I, I love your ridges. Yeah, it's a it's a condition. <laughs> <laughs> I I picked it up in White Run. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, we got Trey Burgerud's here. <laughs> Um, Michael White says, "Hey Justin, can't wait to tr can't wait for Trial by Fire. It's in narration right now. I just finished the first third of narrating it. Obviously, it's got to go to Lori and Jeff after that, then get the proof for on it and all that jazz. But uh, yeah, it's in the works. And um, yeah, Sinful Wound says I don't go on VR chat, but I'm on." I'm in a Discord with a dozen or so VR chat players, and while NSFW trap pictures are posted more often. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. Oh, man. Oh, dude. Uh, you know what would be another great one? Uh, this is like, just such a great topic is, like, you know, I'm, like, doing this, doing the thing, <clears throat> trying to get them to, to fap, and then, the, like, they finally get into it a little bit, and then, like, my voice cracks or something, you know? Oh. Like, like, like in a way that they may question whether or not that actually happened. There's, uh, like, some possibility for a benefit of the doubt situation. 100%. Oh, man. 100%. I would love it if they just started, like, interviewing you. Yeah. Like, was like wait a second. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Ooh. What did you say your name was? <laughs> How old are you? Are you sure you're not a man? <laughs> okay, I believe you. Z I mean, if, if he does too good a job from what it sounds like, they'd be disappointed if he sounds too much like a woman. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. True. Like, what are you, a cis woman? <laughs> a freak. Get out of here. We don't like your kinds in here. Yeah. This is VR chat. This is VR chat. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't tolerate cisgendered people around here. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Frederick Tromsdahl wants to know about uh, Dante's immortality. We're Dude, getting into a bit of the uh, question and answer yeah, period. Yeah, yeah, we but, are. Uh, do we have another I want to know do? that. Oh, yeah? That's another Richard Sashagani uh, 
Oh yeah, he did that cover too. Yeah. All of his covers are awesome, but well, I'm before, also waiting for Dante's Immortality sequel. But before we get into that, though, let's let's see. Do we have one more scene, or we do there, have another scene? Okay. Yes. Well, let's do the one more scene, and then we'll go on to the Q and A. Then we'll go to Q and A. Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Keeping us on track. Uh, so this scene is just all of chapter four. It's a relatively short chapter, only a few okay. pages. Uh, but this Dante. chapter introduces. We're going to be introducing you to uh, my favorite character in the book <laughs> Dude. Um, for the, uh, like, for the worst reasons possible, uh, Sheriff Lucas. All right. I, I got to say, you you did that character so good, like, way too good, honestly. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, I, think, I think maybe that I was... could really relate to him. <laughs> that uh, was you uh, know. one of the highlights of that book, honestly. Oh well, thank you. I'm uh, I'm excited to hear what people think. My thing with Lucas, when I did my pre-read, I basically you did a fantastic job with him because by the end of every chapter that I read of his, I didn't think that I could want to punch him even more. <laughs> but then, lo and behold, I would read the next chapter, and you would find some way to <laughs> ramp it up uh, and make him even more punchable. There, so. For everybody listening uh, at home, watching, listening, um, uh, we're going to play a little game called How Much Do You Want to Punch Lucas in the Face? And basically at the end of this scene, you guys are going to... Actually, while the scene is happening, you yeah. guys can like just like leave your ratings out of 10 of how punchable this guy is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in my opinion that's what makes some of the funnest characters to play is like the more i want to punch my character oh yeah the more motivated i am to represent them faithfully yep. yep so that i can you know in my imagination punch them in in the most vivid way possible oh yes so I can, oh yes i, I, I like feel i feel like i'm seriously punching them in the face I had some like <laughs> serious like emotional reactions to this character, like like anger, like like come on, dude, you're such a dick. <laughs> at the time I was listening to it, like I hadn't worked on the first book in a while. I was like, I think finishing up with the second book, and so re-listening to some of that, I was like, I was like, man, I forgot how messed up some of the stuff was that I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you guys are going to get a taste of it at home now. Um, Jeff, you're going to be playing um, everybody. And there's like a little section in the middle where he's messaging a bunch of mods. Um, bunch of mobs, you said? Mods, mods. Like different, like he's a mod. Okay. Moderator. Um, and so like, yeah, just go for it. Just different voices for everybody. It doesn't really matter too yeah. much, but they're randos. Okay. Is, yeah. is Har is Harper, his cute little assistant? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Harper is the assistant who he might have feelings for. Uh Oh, and then, all right. So just, just wing it with all these other characters. Uh, yeah, I would say that leaf leaf blade Valerie has a pretty, um, significant role. So like, and okay. she's like you know tell me if i'm wrong yay but i always pictured her as more of a you know um like very respectable mod female yeah, yeah. Mod. she she's so she's like bond pretty well respected yes she's like bond so very I just, fair I, right, she's probably one of the more notable like mid-tier mods okay so i am gonna be i'm i'm playing bond <laughs> i am bond i am bond all right let's go Chapter four. Player, Sheriff Lucas. This is my this is my job, bitch. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Chapter four. Player, Sheriff Lucas. Location, Mittagar. World. Serpent Canyons. Region. Class, Sheriff. Moderator. Vitality, level 81. Spirit, level 88. Resolve, level 83. Perception, level 76. Agility, level 79. Strength, level 80. Lucas gaped at the update, then reread certain parts again and again. Is this for real? That's 360 years! Can Arcus really do that? I don't know, Harper replied. I'm connecting Arcus right now to report this. Maybe it's a mistake. 
Harper paused, staring into the air. All the muscles in her body seized at once, and she flicked in and out while with glit visual glitches appearing around her. The glitches stopped, and she collapsed to the dirt with frantic breaths. What happened? Lucas asked. I, I couldn't breathe, Harper said with terror in her voice. It felt like I was suffocating, like really suffocating. Pain reduction is disabled. Didn't you see that in the update? I did, but why did I glitch out like that just from trying to connect to Arcus? I saw a barrage of lights and sounds, like white noise, but I couldn't breathe while it was happening. From my point of view, you were stuck for several seconds, flickering in and out. Is this because you tried to connect to Arcus? Maybe. I'll check the, mod, I'll check the mod chat and, it's, and see if anyone else knows anything. Harper stared at her HUD for several seconds, and then a confused look crossed her face. I can't access the mod chat. Seriously? Lucas opened his mod chat. I can still see it. Harper gasped. <gasps> oh, my mod powers are gone. Wait, what? My powers, they're gone. All I have are the abilities are the other abilities I, I developed on my own. It even replaced my mod shield with a basic mana shield. I don't understand. Did I do something wrong? Lucas could see the sadness on Harper's face, but he couldn't help but smirk. I'm sure it's just a glitch because of the update. You'll get your powers back. When? Harper shouted. In three centuries? I'll message Isaac to find out what's happening. <clears throat> Lucas opened the list of profile names of everyone in the mod chat. Moderators. Online, 232. Offline, 73. Lucas gaped at the numbers. That's barely over 300 total. There should be a thousand mods. Moderators. Online, 196. Offline, 73. Whoa. It's dropping fast. Everyone must be panicking and messaging Arcus. I should probably warn them. Don't try to log out! Harper shouted. Lucas jerked back and glared. Don't yell in my ear! Isaac tried to log off and lost his mod powers too. Harper explained. So logging out or connecting to Arcus apparently takes away your powers. He says we might really be stuck here until the devs figure something out. He noted it's strange because all the devs happened to be in-game at the same time. None of them knew Arcus was planning an update. If we're stuck here, we'll need your powers to keep people in line. I have no doubt everyone will panic once they realize they're trapped. Okay, well, maybe I should... Don't do anything! Harper yelled. It's not worth the risk of losing your powers. Just sit still until we figure out what to do, Lucas. I might not have my abilities, but you still have to listen to me. Lucas felt his heart pounding in his chest. She can't yell at me like this. She's not even a mod anymore. All I was about to suggest was that maybe I should warn the other mods not to connect to Arcus. He glanced at the mod list. Moderators. Online, 89. Offline, 73. He watched as the chat filled with panicked moderators. Look at them, freaking out like children. Why are some of them mid-tier mods, yet I'm stuck in a lower position? I'm handling this better than all of them. Has anyone sent a report to Arcus? Oh, wait. Frederick the Rock. Has anyone sent a report to Arcus? Jake Jake. Like, 20 people said they were going to. I haven't heard back from any of them. Reptile Riley. This is so messed up. I'm not staying here for three centuries. I'm going to spam the log out until I get through. Jake, Jake. Don't! Leaf Blade Valerie. Everyone, stop trying to log out. Moderators, online, 15. Offline, 73. You know what? I'm tired of getting bossed around and treated like a lowly janitor. I'd be a lot more respected if I was the only mod. They deserve to lose their powers if this is how they act anyway. Lucas snickered and then sent a message to the other mods. Sheriff Lucas. We should spam Arcus with reports. I already sent one, but Arcus replied it was a low priority. Frederick the Ronk. 
You got a report through. Maybe it's working now. Jake, Jake. Ugh. I hate to risk losing my powers, but Arcus always prioritizes reports from numerous mods. Trying now. Leaf Blade Valerie. You really got a report through, Lucas? Sheriff Lucas. Yeah, I just sent another. It seems like it's working now. The chat fell silent for several seconds. Leaf Blade Valerie. Lucas? Sheriff Lucas. Yes? Leaf Blade Valerie. Did you really send a report? Sheriff Lucas. I swear I did. Why would I lie about that? Leaf Blade Valerie. Then why are we the only ones left in the chat room? Lucas opened the player list for the chat. Moderators. Online, 2. Offline, 73. Sheriff Lucas. I have no idea. Maybe I got lucky. Leaf Blade Valerie. Huh. Well, what world are you on? Since we're the only two mods, we should regroup. Maybe figure out why you didn't lose your mod powers when everyone else did. Or we can think of a message to send to Arcus so it pri prioritizes this mess. Sheriff Lucas. I'm on Midagar. Leaf Blade Valerie. Do you have teleport up? If so, use it on Midagar again. If not, meet me at the teleport point for that world. Sheriff Lucas. Yeah, I have it ready. I'll see you there. Lucas looked up at Harper, but he could tell she was engaged in a private chat with Isaac. Valerie must suspect that I lied. Oh, God, why did I lie? I guess I thought it was funny. I mean, it is funny, but I might lose my moderator position over this. No. Wait, if Valerie hits me with Mod Gun, the game will boot me. And when Harper gets out of the game, she'll be so mad. I can't let her find out what I did. Do you remember Midagar's teleport point? He asked Harper. Yeah? She answered with a confused look. Meet me there, later. Lucas used World Teleport and vanished with a flash of light. He reappeared at the designated teleport location for Midagar, standing on a plateau that overlooked the canyons to the east and a vast desert to the west. A woman in majestic emerald-colored armor waited for him, standing near the edge of the drop-off, a stern expression on her face. Oh God, she definitely knows I lied. I am so screwed. Lucas. She called. I don't know you very well. But I know you work with Harper. She's a pretty good sheriff. Takes the job seriously. Now, I'll give you one chance to be honest with me. Did you actually send Arcus a report or not? Lucas lifted a finger and fired Mod Gun. Valerie's muscles tensed right before the invisible wave struck, but then she became a chicken. <laughs> But then she, be <laughs> <laughs> she became immobilized. Lucas waited, his heart pounding harder with every second that passed. You're not disappearing? Why weren't you booted from the game? He took several panicked breaths. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, Valerie. I, I thought you'd get booted from the game. I, I didn't know you'd get stuck like that. I just didn't want to get banned first. I thought it would be fun to be the only mod. I let you go as soon as my mod gun recharges. Harper and I both hit someone with mod gun at the same time once and it negated the ban. Just have pity on me. I made a mistake. He wiped sweat from his forehead and tried to slow his frantic breathing. She won't show mercy after this. Look at the anger on her face. She'll trap me for the entire update if I let her go but I can't leave her here. Monsters will eventually find her. If she dies, will she respawn still frozen? No, wait, she won't be able to respawn if she's banned. I'll just kill her. Once again, I'm sorry, 
Lucas said. But I think I ki I'll kill you instead. After the update is over, I have no doubt I'll get permabanned. I accept that. But 360 years is a long time to enjoy being the only mod. Moonblade only has a 250 rating. That won't even break the 300 rated threshold on the mid-tier mod shield. I'll need to use my own rating boost rune, but it'll be worth it. He equipped Moonblade in one hand and a purple rune in the other. The rune glowed as he skimmed the rock across his sword, charging the blade with magical energy that temporarily raised its rating to 350. The rune lost its glow, and he tossed the useless stone aside. Lucas cut through Valerie's mod shield with two quick swipes, but his blade stopped when his third strike touched her neck. He raised his sword, noticing he hadn't even grazed her skin. I can't kill you either. He paused in contemplation. Your body is already designated as needing removal from the game, though apparently the game can't get rid of you because your mind is trapped here. I've heard Arcus has certain mechanics in place to protect players' minds when respawning or logging in and out. Otherwise, this technology could cause unintended shock and trauma. Sheriff Lucas. Can you communicate, at least? He waited for almost a minute, but got no response. It still shows that she's in the mod chat, but she can't message anyone. At least she won't be able to rat me out to her friend list. He stared at the immobilized woman, trying to think of what to do with her. I can't kill you, but I can't release you now that I've tried to kill you. He paused, and he almost thought he could see the terror in her frozen eyes. Can I move you, at least? Lucas grabbed her arms and dragged her several feet. She felt as heavy as he'd expected, but whenever he released her, she stayed frozen in that position. So, what do I do with her? I can't leave her banned for three centuries. I'll have to build a prison she can't escape from, something that blocks communication, like those training chambers at the Mod Academy. I always enjoyed tinkering with the anti-spell and revival runes they used to make the chambers. If I build a room like that, Valerie won't even be able to kill herself to escape. I'll hide you, for now, and come back later. Maybe I'll put you in front of a rune projector of arena battles from different worlds, give you some entertainment while you're trapped here. Then I'll build an anti-spell room around you before unfreezing you. Not even mods can teleport from within an anti-spell room, so I'll keep you there and make a hatch to drop stuff down to you. See? I'm not a bad guy. Would a bad guy do all that for you? I bet you wouldn't do the same for me. He dragged her to the side of the plateau and shoved her off. Lucas watched her fall with a bemused expression on his face, and then he slid down after her. When he reached the bottom, he found Valerie laying on the ground, still in the same pose. This must be really horrifying for you, but I promise I'll have you unfrozen in an anti-spell room in little time. I know how to make the runes for it. It'll only take me a few months, but I'll need to tinker with some revival runes to make sure you can't kill yourself. You can handle being frozen a few months, right? Lucas found a ditch and tossed her into it. He shot mana blasts at the stone wall above, releasing an avalanche of dirt and rocks that buried Valerie below it. Sorry about the darkness, he shouted at the pile. Just be patient with me, Valerie. He leapt from ledge to ledge until he reached the top of the plateau. After dusting himself off, Lucas sighed. <sighs> Now I have 360 years until Harper finds out what I've done. That's multiple lifetimes for her to fall in love with me. If not, then there are plenty of other women trapped in this game. Women that will see me as the most powerful man on the world tree. I'm sure I'll pay for freezing Valerie one day, but that's a long, long time from now. After a few hours, Harper found him. She'd sent him multiple private chats by then, but he'd ignored them until she arrived. What were you thinking? Harper asked. 
For all we know, World Teleport could have taken your mod powers too. I told you not to do anything until I got back. You- Lucas smiled, ignoring the rest of Harper's outburst. She can rant all she wants, but we both know she has no power over me anymore. I'm the only moderator left in the world tree. I have more power than any other player in this game and 360 years to do whatever I please. I won't be treated like a child anymore. I'll be the hero that everyone loves. The only man standing between order and chaos. He peered at the worlds hanging above Midgar, and his smile widened. These are my worlds now. I'm the sheriff of the world tree. Scene. Ooh. Villain established. Yeah, man. Wait, he's the bad guy? Oh, I thought he was the hero. <laughs> that's what he said. That's what I, that's that, what I, that's what I thought. Wait, hold on. Sometimes I don't take what people say at face value, though. That's, that's some uh, death of the author stuff. You know, I put it out there. People, I guess some people interpret it differently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's just... <laughs> Different characters, different motivations, you know. So, someone in chat said Lucas is the leader that we need. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, just this y'all right there. Lucas. That's God, hilarious. There God, you go. God Emperor <laughs> Lucas. Bruce X writes lit RPG. Lucas is the leader that we need. Well, you'll be his his second follower. Stridos uh, rated him a 110 out of 10, though. 110. Wow. Okay. So, so Star Stratos, you started that off <laughs> with a 10 out of 10 would punch again and again. That must have been at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just went up from there. Sinful <laughs> Wound says 8 out of 10, not quite as punchable as my brother. <laughs> and then quickly after, 9 out of 10 and rising. <laughs> what is that? The Simpsons? Urge to kill. <laughs> rising, rising. Fading, rising. Um, solid ten out of ten. As punchable as my brother. <laughs> oh, Sinful yeah. wound says, "I mean, at least he isn't taking her frozen body in the direction some authors would." Ah, I yeah. know which author. <laughs> at least one. Oh of them. no! Oh no! Yeah, we don't need to know. We don't need. To know. We don't need to know. You guys will just find out someday. I really tried to keep this book PG-13, but I think some of the violence later on kind of ruined that a bit. But I wonder, because it is in a video game. Like, it's kind of this weird middle ground, because, you know, if it was happening to real characters, then I think, yeah, definitely. But because it's happening to, like, video game characters and they can respawn, yeah. maybe it's not so bad. Maybe. I did, Sinful Wound. Okay, so is this the is this the Q and A portion? It is time for some Q and A. Yeah, so uh, yeah. let us have it, people. Questions? We got answers. Indeed. Hopefully, Let's do this. unless the questions like, "What is the meaning of life?" In which case, Jeff has the answer to that, but he hasn't shared it with me. No, I'm not. <sighs> Come on, dude. I'm not gonna tell you guys. Come on, dude. <laughs> I'll I'll buy you a Tamagotchi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 42 maybe. oh he got some uh, Douglas uh, Adams fans yeah wow my monitor's super hot what the fuck is that about Ooh, you got you got the hots for it eh yeah maybe all right we, we're not getting questions we're getting only answers here. just yeah well, just answers they're well, just they, like oh we don't, we don't have any questions they yeah, just they, have, they already had the answer mm-hmm Dante mortality sequel. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so <laughs> that I don't know. Uh, Antonio emailed me a few months ago, told me it was coming soon, and all last year he had been writing the book, and um, it was on Royal Road, and lots of people really liked what he had going on for book two, but he fucking hated it, and he deleted the whole thing and started over uh near the end of last year 
So um, by the time he emailed me again, he said he was almost done. But, you know, someone who is willing to completely throw a novel in the trash, which I have to say is completely admirable. Like, this is what I think mm -hmm. most authors should be doing all the time is throwing their novels mm -hmm. away and never releasing them and then starting over. Because that's how... <laughs> That's how you yeah. get better, and that's that's how you n not uh, rip off. I mean, the the first step to improving is to realize that you're doing something that needs an improvement. So yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's apparently what Antonio's doing. I'm hoping he won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like maybe he can salvage something yeah. out of book two. I don't know what he's doing though. I, I mean, he emailed me once. And I haven't heard from him since. And that was, like I said, months ago. So it's it's a mystery. Sometimes it's writing processes like that. Yeah. I know with book two, I ended up doing like way more rewrites than I was planning originally. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Emma, uh, Emma asks, when is the next book coming out again? And which are you talking about the World Tree Online series book three? Or are you talking about the audio book? of book two or are you talking about a completely different series like are you talking about dante's immortality because i just tried to answer that question um while we wait for her to, to clarify her question we will go on to sinful wound when will this book be available in audiobook format i'm assuming you mean world tree online and that and the answer to that is any fucking minute now mm -hmm. uh it was, it was submitted to spoken realms not quite two weeks ago so it should be it should be any, out any, this week i anything. i would i'm putting my money on this week it's got to be this week totally um, okay so emma clarified both okay so when will book two be available on audible as far as world world treats so that's what's was it called demon lord demon lords demon lords and when will book three of world tree be available on kindle book three i i've got a slot with my editor in July. So just depending on how rewrote, rewrites go, I would say either late July or August. Oh, have you already got the first draft done? I'm like pretty, pretty far into it. Yeah, like I'm pretty far near the end. Very yeah. nice. Good stuff. And then Justin, when are you scheduled to start on book two? That is a great question. Um, I, I'm thinking in the next quarter, I mean, it's already done. Uh, so, uh, I will need to take a look at the, um, the schedule. Yeah. But starting, so starting quarter three of 2019, is that what you're saying? Some, sometime uh, in quarter three, sometime in quarter three, probably closer to the end of it. Okay. Uh, I've got a few things coming so up. Booked, man. We are so booked. We are booked, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it is fantastic. I am excited to get back into the world though, into the world tree. Um, I was going to, I was going to mention something as well. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. So we, if you are mm -hmm. looking forward to this audiobook, um, make sure that you join the sound booth theater, Facebook group, uh, sound booth theater live, uh, on Facebook, because we, um, we will keep you posted. We will let you know as soon as it drops, you'll be the first to know. And, um, that is the, that's straight from the source right there. So, um, sound booth theater live Facebook group. All the links are in the description. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where were we? Where, what was the next question Grit, there? Grit Zacian is the next question. <clears throat> and he asks, how long did this book take to write? And how long do you expect a sequel to take? Well, I had a lot of ideas for this. This one weirdly started out the first World Tree book. It actually started out as like two separate ideas that I'd been building off of for a couple of years. And it was kind of a random thought to, to combine the two sets of ideas. And it, it just, I, I finished it really fast compared to how fast I normally write. Like just a, uh, just a four or five months, I want to say. And it was the longest book wow. I've ever written. Yeah, because I, I just, once I had that, like, once I had it in my head, I was just so excited about this idea. And then book two took a little bit longer because I had more, I ended up doing more read rights and stuff. And so mm -hmm. book three, 
I uh, don't remember exactly w when I started working on it, but yeah, should be out in July or August. Exciting. So what is that? Three months? Three months? Uh, like... Well, a little, a little longer because I, I had this one started before, before it actually came out or before the second one came out. I was already gotcha. working on book three. Gotcha. Okay. I want to ask whether or not they make it off the world tree, but uh, I feel like that might be a bit of a spoiler. So, uh, I'm going to keep that one to myself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. Next question. It is from Stridos, I believe. How do you think the world will end? Oh, that is, um, I know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. Um, the mm -hmm. sun expanding until it destroys the earth. No, that's way too easy. Uh, so it will end with a uh, a fire starting, like the sun expanding into and, the earth, <laughs> and and uh, and more and more things start catching on fire, and a clown will yep. try to warn everyone mm, mm. what's happening, and yep. no one will believe him, and they will all just laugh because he's a clown, and then the world will end. Hmm. This, I is, think, this, is a, this is a current working theory, by the way. This is. I think. I think there's some. I think there's some people. Oddly who specific. Yeah, there, I think there's some people who are gonna recognize what I just said there. But um, <laughs> who's the clown? Oh, that actually yeah. reminds <laughs> me of a Super Tramp song called "If Everyone Was Listening." It's like you pretty much hit the the lyrics bang on the head, minus the fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Now, uh one trey bergeron asks will jeff ever write a book and oh right i missed that I, one. I am not gonna answer that question oh <gasps> he's that. going to write a book that's <laughs> what? what that means what how does that even that's how what that means get, how do you even get that from from me saying that i'm not going uh, to answer that yeah. who's going to do the audio book uh <laughs> nick podell probably uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 He's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Stridos the Mute also asks, what language do deaf people think in? And someone else in the chat already already answered that. They think in the language they learned to read in first, which isn't even funny. I mean, like, why would you answer a question like that for real reels? Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. who ties the barbs and the barbed wire? <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave that for Elias to answer. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's like a uh, machine just making the barbed wire. Mm. And the machine's name is Barb. Mm. Yep. Yeah, of course. That's it's, why. Yep. She's like a, a, a heavy set lesbian uh, machine <laughs> that just ties knots with her robotic tongue. And the factory uh, is called the Barber Shop. The barber shop, barbs, barbed wire, <laughs> yeah, bar barbing, shop. barber shop. Okay. Uh, beautiful. <laughs> the world started with a sneeze and it will end with a tissue from Trey. <laughs> huh? um, Grit is expressing that he likes this live format. The Q&A with the author is cool. I agree um earth is just a dingleberry we don't need to finish that sentence <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right we've made it to the bottom so um thank you very much for asking all of your questions hopefully you are satisfied now that you know how the world is going to end and um we're on to the last portion of the show which is plugs 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 not hair plugs which i could probably use um marketing plugs for shit that we're working on elias why don't you start us off what are you working on or what's what's out there uh well book two just came out a couple months ago and that's out there and uh obviously the audiobook for the first one is coming out anytime now and i i suggest everybody get it because it is amazing you guys did an amazing job with it the sound effects also are so cool because like i wasn't even thinking about stuff like that when i was writing like they didn't get the the audience today didn't get to see like the um the chat the voice chat thing and and it yeah. worked really cool in the audiobook. So, yes, our um, final editor on this, who added all the sound effects, is Ahmed Mahmoud. 
and um yeah he he, he put together he some great sound effects for this great job um, yes yeah okay. and um he also did the the trailer which uh you guys are going to be seeing soon once uh once this launches um he he put together the trailer and it's spot on it's it fantastic is so it is so good um okay uh demon lords book two of world tree online or world tree trilogy and um the audiobook for world tree online is coming out this week minute. jeffrey we're gonna end with jeff we're gonna end with jeff because he's got he's got a lot of plugs I i'm gonna it. i'm gonna jump in uh, i've got a little plug basically um uh, my buddy is writing a game lit on uh royal road legends and uh, his name's Harlan Guthrie, and uh, he wrote this a few months or He's writing this, uh, still putting it together. And uh, he's got, I think, 11 or 12 chapters up. He's pretty much got the whole story all fleshed out. But uh, while he's posting chapters, uh, I've been narrating chapters. Uh, so And posting them up on YouTube for you guys to listen to. So uh, if you like audiobooks that you don't have to pay for that is a great opportunity for you to follow along in his gamelet story called the code link is in the description which is right under my finger right about right about here yep about a few inches lower pick up and that's my plug on youtube okay lastly our plugs for today a Thousand Drunken Monkeys by Eric Nylon just released today. Go pick it up. The link is not in the description, but if you go to um, it, the Facebook group, Sound Booth Theater Live. Oh, wait, we haven't posted about it yet because that happened right before we jumped on the stream. So, uh, actually, go to the Gamelet Society. There's a link to it there. And, that, and um, yes, also, uh, what, what just came out before this? um the last release that we had uh war turnus war, war turnus yep war turnus Turnus 4. 4 is still available still going strong people are loving it and um i'm getting that link set up by the way oh thank you thank you um gotta check our newest arrivals man i totally oh and cavern of spirits of course just came out uh Cavern of Spirits and Game of Lies, both Annie Ellicott narrations, both continuations of her series. Um, fucking beautiful work. So please go pick those up, guys. And that's that's about it for the plugging. Besides, like this video if you had a good time. Subscribe to the channel if you want to have several more good times in a row. Mm, several? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that kind of paints a picture, though. Yeah, doesn't it? Mm, uh, several yeah. good times in a row. A train of good times. You'll be you'll be notified the next time we have a sound booth theater live, which will be happening Thursday, as Annie and I explore voices for a book called Soulbound to a Dragon by an author named Curtis Eckstein, who we just signed recently, who uh, Will Watt is actually narrating a book for right now. Um, we did an SBTL for that on Friday, so you can check that out as well. And yeah, that's about it. Soulbound to a dragon. Na, 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 na. All right. So can we do like okay, can we can we say let's take the rest of the questions that are in the chat and no more? And, okay. And yep. Then, yep, let's do it. What will the title be for book three of World Tree? Uh unannounced right now. Oh, I, I, that's I got cool. it in my head, Meta. but I don't want I don't want to say. I really love that title. That's, that's great. Unannounced. unannounced. Yeah. World tree unannounced. Yeah. <laughs> what's, the picture behind, what's the picture behind Justin? So this is a picture that I have installed in my sound booth of a TV on a stand, a table and a laundry basket, um, as well as a, like, I framed it myself. Yeah. This and... is another Richard S Sashigani piece by the way it is yeah yeah i, I commissioned it i paid two thousand dollars uh for this uh some empty beer cans yep. um and a bottle and is a stormtrooper clock storm beautiful yeah. piece beautiful piece yeah, it's very nice it's very it's nice it also uh amazing. it also doubles as a door so oh, cool. uh 
That's <laughs> really fucking cool, dude. Yeah. What you can do with digital media yeah, nowadays. It's, I'm, it's 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 absolutely I bet, incredible. I bet the audience couldn't even tell that was all CGI. Yeah, all yeah. of it. Yeah, all yeah. CGI. It's I just... can tell by the pixels, but most people aren't internet experts like right, I right. am. Yeah. True, that is true. Who is your favorite character to write and why? I I'm assuming this is Elias's question oh yeah well i, I wrote in chat I, I don't really have a favorite character but a lot of the characters on this book were fun right like just vincent lucas to an extent um and like i said <laughs> zan and zan and jim I, I like both those characters a lot they're very fun right okay uh multiple good times yes yes okay and was that an angry orchard i saw <clears throat> you drink favorite beer and that's also elias yeah that that just happened to be what it was at the uh convenience store down the road uh i think half the time i just nowadays i just drink like vodka mixed with diet coke <laughs> vodka mixed with diet coke. <laughs> uh, you know i was going to ask that that root beer flavored beverage what was the root beer oh flavored yeah beverage that he drinks? i think at the time i wrote that i was drinking a lot of those uh at most of liquor stores around here have the uh shoot what is it called not your father's oh. root beer not your father's root beer or something they're like root beer beers yes. i think i yep. must have just been drinking a lot of those around the time i wrote that scene okay all I right those that. those are all the answers to all the questions that anyone's ever wanted to ask mm -hmm. so uh yep. we have solved world hunger mm -hmm. uh jeff no what's the meaning of life infinite, uh not happening infinite oh, peace damn it except nice try, for that Alex. that's the i mean Obviously, I'm not going to give that one away, or else what would everyone do Damn. with themselves? But mm. thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us. Thank you, Justin, for being such an excellent host. Thank you, Elias, for writing this book and uh, entertaining all these people with us. And thank you for having me. That's it. Bye, everybody. Ciao.